All right, so welcome back to another episode of our dashboard series. So in this episode, we're going to go ahead and create a couple of type ORM entities. And I'm going to show you what happens um, uh, when, to the database when it actually synchronizes. Okay, so uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and create a folder called entities. And actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to rename this to type ORM, and then I'm going to go ahead and inside type, I'm going to create a folder called entities. That's I think that's going to be a lot better. All right, so I'm going to create one called guild configuration. All right, now if you've seen my previous uh, dashboard tutorials before, if you've seen my series that I uploaded like over a year ago on how to create a, a, a multi guild discord bot, uh, I've always used the same name called Guild Configuration. So I want to explain a little bit what this is for the people who aren't familiar. So this Guild Configuration, it's going to be a class, or you can think of it as an object, right? It's basically going to be an entity that's going to represent all of the configurations for the Guild, uh, for that specific Discord, for, for the Discord bot, for a specific Guild. So remember, if your bot is going to be able to join multiple different Guilds, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to provide some kind of way for users to, you know, modify the prefix, modify what channel the bot will send, you know, logs to, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And we all want to we we want to encapsulate all of this data into a class. And we're going to call that class a guild configuration. Okay? So, for example, whoops. We're going to create a class called guild configuration. And we're going to go ahead and use a decorator. We're going to use the entity decorator. This pretty much annotates this class as an actual type ORM entity. And we need to do that. Okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually pass the name property. I'm going to call this guild configurations with snake case. Because I like using snake case for MySQL. Okay. So uh, we now have our class. What we're going to do next is we're going to go ahead and set up the primary uh, the primary column or the primary ID. So that's going to be a primary generated column. Uh, so this is going to be just an ID, which is just going to be a number. Right. Every single MySQL, uh, every single most tables will usually have a, uh, a primary key that has an auto generated number. Uh, not every single table will have it, but most of the time, if you want something like a primary key, uh, doing something like this would be what you what well, this is what you do in type ORM. Now it seems like it's giving us a, an issue proper. It has no initializer. It is not definitely assigned. Okay, yeah, so this error is going to be kind of not error, but this uh, linting issue is going to be annoying. I know what to do. Let me just configure this real quick. Where is strict? Okay, so uh, the property inside tsconfig.json to uh to ignore this is just set strict property initialization to false by default it was commented out so i just uh uncommented it and set it to false if you don't want to deal with this you can actually just use an exclamation mark but i don't want to do that for every single property so um yeah so the reason why i'm doing this is because um uh type ORM is going to handle everything for us so i don't really want to worry about that so yeah Okay, so now that we have the ID set, uh, the guild configuration is going to have, remember, it's going to have properties that are related to what represents a configuration for the guild for your Discord, for the Discord bot. So, for example, the most common one is going to be a guild prefix. I'm going to call this prefix. And it's going to be a string. Remember, this is the, the prefix this is the command prefix. So it could be a dollar sign. It could be an exclamation mark, whatever it is. And every single guild is going to have a default prefix. Uh, so you can also add like a default value as well. You can do it like that. Um, or you can also just initialize it like this. If you actually had that tsconfig property uh, enabled, the one that I just disabled right over here. If you actually, I disabled this strict property initialization. You can actually set this like this. The ID, you're obviously not going to set that. Because that's what the database, uh, that's what type ORM, uh, or actually, not, not type ORM, that's what the MySQL database will do for you, okay? 
Um, anyways, so yeah, we'll just leave it like that for now. Uh, but like I said, you can also just do default this, and that would also work too. Okay, so we'll have the prefix. Uh, what else will we have? Um, well, we'll also have some configurations for logs. Um, so if you want, you can actually just put everything in this table. For now, I will put everything in this table. Later on, we might do you know other things such as having like foreign keys that map to another different uh table so that way we can have a more normalized database which is a, a, a common practice that we need to do in my sequel for now we're not going to do that so a couple of the properties i can think of that we can configure would be the ids of the channel so for example um having a simple welcome channel right like usually most bots they'll have a channel that sends a welcome message to the user. So I can do something like welcome channel ID, something like that. Okay. And what's going to happen is um, on the front end, right, you're going to have a UI, you're going to have a component that's going to allow the user or the administrator to manage what channel that the bot should send messages in when the user uh, has joined the server. Okay. And then you're going to want to go ahead and, you know, select whatever channel it is. And then once they do that, it will update this record in the database. And then every single time a user joins the server, it's going to look this. Uh, it's going to look for this guild configuration for the correct guild, and it's going to use this welcome channel ID. A couple other things that are that are non-negotiable that you must have in the guild configuration. Uh, well, obviously you must have the guild ID. That's uh, that's kind of obvious. Almost forget that. And the reason why you need the guild ID is because that's how you're going to be able to search up. Uh, you know, which guild uh, this configuration is for. You can actually uh, set this to a unique column. So that way you can avoid having, um, you know, two guild configurations for one guild. Because every guild should really only have one guild configuration. Okay. So for now, we'll, we'll, we'll settle on this. Okay. We're not going to, you know, like, so we're not going to go too crazy. I want to just do some simple stuff and then later on we will uh, as the series progresses we will add more cool stuff let me just do one more thing let me just um let me just uh change the casing so what i'm doing here with the names is that okay so in the code itself we would reference this uh as this welcome channel id in the database it's going to have these underscores okay and that's because i personally i prefer having snake case in my sequel uh, that's just a common convention. Um, you, you'll rarely ever see people using camel case in MySQL. I mean, you could do it, but I don't really like that. I prefer uh, snake case. Okay. So uh, now that we have done this, in order to actually get this to create the actual table, a couple things we need to do. First, we need to go ahead and set synchronize to true. You only want to have this set to true in development mode. And what this will do is every single time you make changes to your, um, to your uh, entity, if you update, oh, I'm sorry, if you add a column, if you remove a column, it will synchronize it and it will remove or add the column for you. Uh, we also want to make sure we have our entities right over here. So the easy thing that we could do is we can just simply add every single entity to this array over here. Now let's go ahead and actually run the application. Hopefully there's no issues. Okay, so bot has logged in. Now let's go into our MySQL server. And there we go. We have our table. Let's go ahead and uh, describe guild configurations so we can see what it looks like. And you can see everything that we've had created or every every field that we've defined is literally a column in our database see how cool that is see how powerful this is how powerful type rm is so that's why i would encourage anyone to take the time and learn something like type rm or really any rm like you know prisma uh, prisma js for example which is also another uh another good uh uh orm okay um yeah so that's going to be our guild configuration so whenever um so what so basically what we're going to do next to actually utilize or to actually use this guild configuration uh what we're going to do 
is whenever a bot joins a server, uh, we're going to handle that event. And then what we're going to do is we're going to set up a default. We're going to set up a default schema for that guild. And what that means is we're going to have a default prefix. The welcome channel ID, that's fine being null, because if it's null, that means that the user is just not going to send, that the bot is not going to send messages at all. Um, the guild ID, as well as the ID. So, okay, so let's run through this real quick. Whenever the bot joins the server, and that happens whenever you authorize the bot to literally join your own server, there's an event called, um, I think it's called guild add, I think, or guild ready. Let me actually double check real quick. You don't want to misinform you all. But there is an event that is emitted. Okay, let me just double check. I think it's called, I think it's guild create. I think it's guild create. Yeah, so whenever the bot joins a guild slash servers or the same thing, um, it, what, what's going to happen is it's going to emit that guild create event. Okay, and it's going to give us this guild parameter, which is literally just a guild object. Okay, that guild object is going to have a lot of information, such as the guild ID, the guild name, the guild avatar, anything okay, that we need. The only thing that we'll really need is the guild ID. Um, and uh, I think, you know, if you want, you can have the guild owner, but I don't really recommend saving that because that can always change. So there's no point, um, but it's really up to you. You can look through uh, all the fields here and see what you think is best for your needs. Um, but yeah, so we're, we're just going to see the guild ID and then we're going to just, uh, we don't have to worry about the prefix because by default, the prefix is going to be a question mark. So we don't have to worry about that. Uh, welcome channel ID. This is going to be by default null. The ID, this is just going to be the primary key. It's just going to be generated. So you have to worry about it. And the guild ID will be unique. So I'll show you all how to do that in the next episode okay in this episode the whole point was to show you all how to actually set up an entity next episode we're going to set up whenever the bot joins the guild we're going to set up the guild configuration and then it'll be and then we're then going to i'm going to show you how to actually uh you know use that guild configuration so it'll actually use the correct prefix because right now if we were to use uh, the bot commands it would actually use the uh the the prefix that's hard coded into the code base it's not using it from the database so i'll show you all how to do that so uh, i'm really excited to like i said show you all how to do all of these things so definitely stay tuned for the next couple of episodes um and i'll see you guys in those episodes peace out